I'm Alan Weiss, and this is The Writing on the Wall. Hi, I'm Alan Weiss. Welcome again to Writing on the Wall. This is episode 69, Cerebral vs. Visceral, or Ouch, You're Hurting My Brain. You know, dogs bark at strange things. Buddy and Koufax here bark at the alarms out on the driveway. Even though they recognize the vehicle, or they recognize the people walking toward us, they still bark. There's a visceral reaction that they need to bark at certain things. If they're in the truck with me, we're going for coffee. If they see a dog on the street, they will bark at the dog. Even though the dog's, dog's not a threat, not bothering them, bark at the dog. It's what they do. We used to have a, a terrier named Phoebe who would bark at people in uniform. Not good when you're passing a police officer. Anybody in uniform, she barked at. And Buddy Beagle will bark if Koufax barks. So if Buddy is sound asleep, and he hears Koufax in a distant room barking, Buddy jumps up and starts barking. Doesn't know why, feels he ought to do it. And the problem I find is, we all sort of bark in the night. Remember Sherlock Holmes' story? It was about the dog that didn't bark. We all tend to bark in the night. By that I mean, something comes along and we jump up and bark. Re-engineering. Good to great. Social media platforms. Men are from Jupiter, women are from the sun. Whatever it happens to be, we jump up and bark and we don't think about it carefully. Maybe it doesn't deserve the noise. Maybe it doesn't deserve the attention. We fall in love with our own methodology and we start barking about that. I was at a speech, making a speech, and it's not unusual to come off the stage and have people ask you questions and ask where they can get more information, and I try to be patient with each person, although sometimes the line gets kind of long. One guy walks up to me and he hands me a package and he says, these are insoles for shoes. Insoles for shoes. I said, yeah? He says, they'll make you much more comfortable. I said, I am rather comfortable. These are good shoes. He says, nobody's as comfortable as they are when they're wearing these insoles. And I'd like you to mention them in every one of your speeches because it's a, just a boon to the human race. Everyone needs these. That's being zealous crazy about your methodology. It's barking in the night. You need some realism here. I was raising funds at an event, pro bono, speaking to raise funds, and a woman walks up to me and hands me a brochure about a separate fundraising thing that she's into and says, why don't you mention this for me as well? Why would I do that? I'm not here for that reason. These people haven't come here for that reason. Stop barking in the night. Get some judgment, get some perspective. Our emotions often overwhelm our intellect. Now, I've long said that logic makes people think, emotion makes them act. Fair enough in a buying situation. You want the buyer to react viscerally, to trust you, to like you, to want to go forward, to fear not moving. That's fine. But not every day all the time. We need our intellect. Otherwise, emotionally, you wind up buying things like electric forks, and later you find you have no use for them. That's why so many people in so many positions are polarizing, because emotions come in. They drop like shields on the Starship Enterprise. And once the shields come in, once the emotions come in, we can't communicate anymore. Logic just takes a bad hit, a, a torpedo in the starboard bow. So too often we think about fire, aim, ready. We have to abandon that. The emotionalism is the fire. Did we aim right? Okay, now we'll get ready. That's an emotional response. It's barking in the night. So do we need 13 habits of nine successful people working a three-hour work week in non-functional teams? Is all this stuff really necessary? Does it make a difference pragmatically in our lives every day? Or are we just grabbing on to some wagon that's rolling down a hill? One time, my dogs were out in the backyard and they decided they would howl. It's a rare thing, but Koufax started howling and of course Buddy's a hound and he can howl till the cows come home. And a few minutes later, there was an absolute prehistoric return howl from about a mile or so away. It sounded like some kind of Tyrannosaurus out there in the woods. And Buddy and Koufax looked at each other and at this mammoth howl that was responding to them and hightailed it back inside, discretion being the better part of valor. Be careful when you bark. You don't know what you'll attract. 